I mean, we literally climbed into the blind, looked up, and he's walking straight at us. I mean, I'm grabbing my release aid, putting an air on. It happened so quickly, and this is early in the afternoon. He's coming straight at us. I'm like, yeah, here we go. I've got high anticipation for this brand new episode of Nomad's Cutting Room Floor only right here on DoD TV. Coming up, Mark has the closest encounter with the Triangle 10 to date, which might just see the mad scientist finally close the book on this will he, won't he saga. Then we're moving right along the Drury Brothers double sit as Mark steps back up to the plate for a picture perfect hunt like no other. And Old Man Winter swaps places with cameraman Forrest who's raring to take down a buck of his own. favorite spots it's triangle bottom we're back after the triangle 10 had an encounter with him in an earlier phase and then we switch gears to big frame well here we are high anticipation this phase and the next phase is probably my best chance to run into that giant deer so our fingers are crossed we have some luck here in the great state of iowa you're in high anticipation another phase but the same buck the triangle 10 dad and coon dog are going in after him mark is so calculating with pictures and past history he knows this deer pretty well i'm just patiently waiting for a bingo text because dad has had his eyes and his heart set on the triangle 10. what an iowa giant I mean, we literally climbed into the blind, looked up, and he's walking straight at us. I mean, I'm grabbing my release aid, putting an air on. It happened so quickly, and this is early in the afternoon. He's coming straight at us. I'm like, yeah, here we go. Scrape trees at 25, he's at 30 and closing. Get my bow ready, I got tension on the string. All I need is for him to turn broadside anywhere in and around that scrape tree. that happen like the wind's perfect I didn't understand it at the moment I thought he had to have caught a draft I eventually looked at a trail camera from that field and just before he came onto that field at the other end I have pictures of a coyote I can only put two and two together and assume he must have seen the coyote behind the blind I still for the life of me don't know what happened there one thing's for sure I did not kill the triangle 10 that afternoon oh that one hurt <laughs> That hurts. We had him dead to rights, dog. Is what it is. That hurts, man. That hurts. Well, we're back on the main farm here this evening. We've got a couple of deer that we're looking for. Nothing, nothing really earth shattering, I'll tell you. It's not, not good. HD really took the bite out of this place. But we've got a couple that we really like to harvest if they show their face. So we'll see what happens. Forrest behind the bow. I'll be behind the camera and doing some stellar, stellar cinematography. I believe that'll tell you another one. This is probably the most protected spot I have on the farm. We rarely go in there because it, it usually is so good. We're kind of collecting our gear. I look up and see a beautiful, beautiful pile of T-bones sitting right out in the middle of my field. Hi, hi. 
Oh. That's not exactly what you want to see when you come into bow hunt, a cow standing at one of your best food plots. What do you do in this scenario? Our, our only option is to somehow get that cow off the field. I didn't want her to go and tromp the field all up because we've spent a lot of time and effort getting this field to look like this. Go on, try it, you try it. What do you, what do you yell at him? Just whatever. <laughs> well, Forrest is kind of the cow whisperer. He somehow starts talking or singing to this cow. It's not my fault. You've been lying saying that I took away. Did you kill him? Oh yeah. No. no comment. No comment. It's like a big puppy dog. You know, there's never a dull moment when you're in the outdoors. Who can say that they're hunting and they actually returned a cow to a neighbor? What good citizens. Fortunately, uh, they're tame enough. He works with them every single day that he finally got her in the, in the pen with the rest of them. Holy cow, guys, you got time to get back in the blind. to a new spot, a spot that has been there for a while, but I never would go hunt it because I didn't have the scent protection that I've become accustomed to. So last night we decided after the hunt, we got back from Texas, we hunted, and then we went in there and erected a muddy bull blind to help with our scent protection. So Coon Dog and I are going in and we're having the maiden voyage sit at Doy Corner. We needed a muddy bull there. I had an old big game freestyle not much scent control included in that blind whatsoever. We went in after dark, myself, Dustin, Wade, Coon Dog. We didn't take any cameras, we snapped one picture, but we erected that muddy bull over three and a half hours between 6.30 and 10 p.m. It was ready for the following night's sit. He's wide. He's nice, eh? Yeah. Oh yeah, he's six and a half. That's a big six-year-old. Yeah, 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 we can end it right here, buddy. Boy, is he desperately seeking or what? What a start. That's seven minutes till three. We just had a deer that I'm fairly certain is six and a half. Big wide nine, boy. Awesome encounter. I mean, we literally just got in here, got the windows clean, put the curtains up, and I mean, what a what a great start to a brand new blind. Exciting. Now that's what high anticipation's all about. They want to get with a doe so bad it's not even funny. Awesome. He's just doing his thing. He's looking for any doe, like desperately. Who would have thunk it, but we have one of the best nights of the entire season. Several does, several bucks, things are really starting to shape up and uh, we could not have been more surprised. Look out back of the blind, all of a sudden this one deer, pretty doggone looking buck. Uh, at the time we thought he might have been five and a half, uh, but after further inspection, I believe him to be a four year old. He comes in here, has no brow ties. We were a little indecisive as to who he was. Bishop. Most guys would have been saying, shoot her. But we were a little bit apprehensive at first because he wasn't one on our list. And the old adage, think long, think wrong, we did just that. It took us a little bit too long to decide what to do. Think long, think wrong. Well, he'll make it, he'll live to see another day. That's so good. Well, we just had a really good encounter with a really nice deer. And now uh, we have a guest coming into camp, so we're thinking about maybe saving him for him. He's a really nice deer. Came walking down the road, ran right in front of the box. When I worked, it's great. Bumped some does around. Really, really pretty stuff. It's what you like to see. It's phase five, high anticipation, and that's exactly what we're looking for in this phase. We've seen a lot of bucks tonight. Good stuff.
the deer were on the move, and I mean, they are just filing past. Incredible sit. We were so happy we took the time to put that muddy bull up. incredible sit out of that muddy bowl. Didn't see our target buck, but nonetheless, we were smiling because we knew we had a new hot spot in place. This episode of DOD TV is brought to you by First Farm, the foundation of high performance nutrition. Join the Legion of Boom today. We're adding new videos every week, so make sure to click that subscribe button and check out all of our amazing content. This episode of DOD TV was brought to you by MOTV. For full episodes of 13 and all of our outdoor channel content, head over to the MOTV app and view it today.